establishing its Protection of Freedoms Bill today. Nick Clegg says he wants to hand back what he calls hard-won British freedoms to people. It's expected to include reforms to the DNA database, the way CCTV is regulated, and a reduction in the number of people who have to be vetted before they can work with children. And it's that policy that we're going to focus on now. Paul McDowell is the chief executive of NACRO, the crime reduction charity. Good morning. Uh, good morning. And Mark Williams-Thomas is a child protection expert. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Paul, first of all, what do you make of those changes um, to vetting? Well, we very much at NECRO welcome uh, the proposals, um, particularly to overhaul the vetting and barring and CRB checking in line with calls that we've made in our ongoing Change the Record campaign that's linked to the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act. I think the current system of checks does stand in the way of rehabilitation, prevent sex offenders from finding work, and that's missing an opportunity to reduce reoffending. But crucially, it, we've lost the balance between uh, liberty on one hand and protection, well, crucial protection of children and vulnerable adults on the other. Preventing sex offenders from finding work might be your priority, but I doubt it's most people's. Well, I, I think it's probably worth um, uh, listeners understanding the range of um, uh, employment opportunities that are subject to CRB checking. So uh, employers at the moment deem, uh, some employers deem that the following things are um, uh, relevant employment opportunities to be checked. Um, uh, they would be dog wardens, IT secretary and admin staff, refuse collectors, customer service uh, staff, fire the, the, the point here, the point here that I think you seem to have lost, is that this is about Rehabilitation of Offenders Act. And I can completely understand people who've got convictions for theft or criminal damage or those that don't apply to a, to a risk of children quite rightly shouldn't be prevented from working with children. And that is about understanding how to do those risk assessments when information comes up on a CRB. But you aren't seriously asking us to accept that people who've got a conviction for a sexual offence or a, an assault against a child should come under the Rehabilitation Offenders Act? Uh, that's absolutely right. Uh, uh, protection of children and vulnerable adults remains absolutely our paramount concern. Uh, there's no doubt about that, and that's not what I'm referring to. What I'm referring to is the much, much wider uh, application of the CRB uh, process and the vetting and barring, which is capturing uh, a, a massive number of uh, people but, in a but what wider it's doing, sense. What it is doing, it's enabling the employer to understand what those previous convictions, cautions, warnings, or information is without a CRB and without the individual providing that information, the employer won't know. So therefore, it's really important that CRBs are undertaken. When they first started, I didn't believe that people would undertake CRBs if they had something on their CRB or some conviction. But we know that they do. And people are being excluded constantly because of what comes up on a CRB. So if you to come out and say that this is a very regressive step, uh, sorry, a very positive step, I would say absolutely not. This is about creating opportunities for offenders to gain what greater about, access uh, to children. Mark, you, uh, uh, most of the texts we've had on this this morning are from people saying, I'm a teacher, I'm a volunteer worker, I'm a care worker. It's complaining about the, the ineptitude of the checks and, and the frequency of them. Is, is there not a better system whereby anyone who falls into this category, whether it's a teacher or a volunteer or a scout leader, has, in the way that a midwife, for example, or a nurse or a doctor has a fitness to practice test every few years, that we do that with you know, fitness to work with children? Well, absolutely, and that but, is But that what, isn't what it's like, is it? Well, that is what was going to be brought in. That is what the independent safeguarding was going to do, regular reviews, it was going to effectively enable you to have but it seems to be event by event, application by application, rather than that. No, because what would happen, the, the 9 million that was going to be caught under the independent safeguarding scheme, it was going to give them the ability to have a registration that would be constantly updated if they were then to move employment or to go to another place. What this is now saying is that unless you're in very regular contact, and we don't know how much that is, unless you're in very regular contact, you won't have to undertake a CRP. And some of those outspoken individuals, let's look at these all authors who came out and said it's wrong to go into school. Well, let me remind them of the case of William Main in 2004, who was convicted of multiple offences against young children in an excess of 100 children that he'd abused. That never came out at the time, but I can tell you, he was going into schools, he was reading with children within schools, and that gave him the access to children. Offenders seek in, in out what way was he, In what way was he reading? One-on-one -on -one teaching or... No, he was, going in and doing, he was going in and doing group reading sessions with young girls, with boys within schools, and that's where he got his children towards the, in, in order to offend. We now know more about offenders than we ever have done before. And we so know would he be able to get, if, if, this was, uh, if this was relaxed, these rules were relaxed, would he be able to get through the net now? Well, he wouldn't be checked, would he? Would so, he, would he be checked? 
Well, he wouldn't be checked because unless he fulfills the criteria. Well, I, I, we would want uh, people in those circumstances to be checked. It's my understanding that they, they will be. Let me broaden this out. Let me give you a couple well, of examples. Well, they won't be. Hang on, hang on. Let's understand. The criteria, and we don't know exactly where it sits at this moment in time, but if they were to say that it, it doesn't, co doesn't cover people who have access to children perhaps once a month, which may fulfill this criteria of this individual, therefore he wouldn't be CRB checked. He wouldn't fulfill the criteria. And that would mean that uh, someone with a conviction would be into working with children. So your argument about saying let's relax it and the government's proposal to relax it creates opportunities for offenders to gain access to children and particularly within the voluntary sector. Well let, let's see what the, the detail of the announcement is but certainly we, we would take the same view as you that uh, people in those circumstances should be checked. What about but those examples when, when we remove it from institutions? What about like schools? But what about those examples where individual groups of parents have you know agreements whereby you know parent A takes everybody's kids on a Monday, parent B takes everybody's kids on a Friday or does a bit of child mind. There's that case of the two police women who did child mind, mutually did child minding and were told they couldn't. I mean, you know, inside schools it's perhaps a clearer picture, but outside of schools, outside of scout groups, what were they? Yeah, I mean, it was never going to cater for those people who were volunteering in so much as they were going Private to pick, arrangements. Up, pick up a friend. They never catered for that. Um, but it did cater for those people who would at a weekend give up their time to go and spend with children. Uh, and let's be very clear about this. This process that the government have created, this, this phase one of the process, isn't about safeguarding children or vulnerable adults. It's about saving money. It's about enabling them to scrap the independent safeguarding, to move away from the existing contract they have with Capita, with CRB, create a new body which will enable them to get out of existing contracts. That's not about safeguarding money, safeguarding children at all. It's about saving money. And it isn't about a common sense approach, because if you actually spoke to those parents out there who have children being looked after, each and every one of them would turn around and say, if it's about safeguarding children, I want it. Let's have a look at a text here. Um, CRB, I as an adult teacher moving about need a new check. Uh, more than each year. My husband, who's been in the same job for 30 years with children and adults, has never needed one. Why don't we all have one every five years? Uh, that's from Judith. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the issue of portability is a massive issue, and it's one, and by portability I mean if you work for one organisation and you then go and work for another, each individual organisation will require you to do a CRB. That's clearly a, a, a nonsensical approach where you could end up with doing five or ten Shouldn't they just CRBs? be able to ring the previous organisation? Well, uh, currently you can't because legal requirements won't allow you to do that. Portability in this new piece of legislation will allow that to happen. So out of all of this requirement that's coming in, all the changes coming in, portability is the only one that makes sense. And just a final one on, from, from you, Paul McDowell, on broader than just this vetting and barring system, CCTV, number plates, that kind of thing, that's all going to come into this. Is it right that it does? Uh, well, I think it is right that it does. I mean, I think we've, we've focused on a particular uh, part of the, uh, the changes that will be announced, but this is a much, much broader uh, issue, and had I had the chance, there are some really good examples. So, for example, the uh, young woman who we were able to help in a college in Worcestershire who was excluded from her college course on the basis that she had uh, stolen lipstick from a department store when she was 15, and there are lots and lots of examples like that. It, this, it's become much too broad. We need to narrow it down and focus our resources on the most important things, which is to protect children and vulnerable adults appropriately. Thank you to both of you, Paul McDowell, Chief Executive of NACRO, and Mark Williams, Thomas, Child Protection Expert. And we will be discussing this issue on your call at 9 o'clock. It's 8.21.